Buddy. Wait. Now do it. Hi, everybody. <laughs> By now, you realize we're recording this. And the reason we're recording this is so we can all take advantage of Janet's wisdom and knowledge. I have to give you a disclaimer that because this is being recorded and we're doing it in the same room, like 10 inches away from each other, I cannot predict what's about to happen. So hold on and we're going to talk about rest. So rest right now is a very difficult thing for people to truly give themselves permission to take advantage of. Uh, I think COVID gave us a little bit of a glimpse into what truly the Sabbath should be. But Janet, you mentioned in, in, in your uh, reflection about how society has taken the Sabbath and rest and kind of transformed it a little bit, but not necessarily in a good way. That's true. <laughs> it's very true. Sorry, folks, I have to get a little used to this format. Um, it's true, though. You know, Jesus said we can't serve two masters, money and him. And unfortunately, of course, our society being market based and whatever, um, you know, it's really about the almighty dollar. And so stores, you know, I remember a time when stores were closed on Sunday and the grocery store was open from like 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. So you had to think of what you needed for that Sunday meal and go shopping during that time frame. And everybody was OK with these rules. But then. I guess stores realize, you know, we're losing money on, on Sunday because people aren't always going to church and there's time to, to sell stuff. And um, so the laws got changed. I think they called them the blue laws. I'm not sure mm -hmm. why. But anyway, the laws got changed. And, um, and so now there's just kind of like this pursuit of the almighty dollar. Not to mention that, you know, sometimes folks are working more than a five-day work week or their work weeks are off, whatever. And um, and then, you know, so maybe Sunday then becomes the day to catch up on the chores around the house. And there's just not that day to kick back, relax, put your feet up, worship God, hopefully. Um, but in addition to that, do things that are outside your normal routine. Yeah, and I found it interesting that out of all the nine rules that we're going to talk about, that this really is the only one that is intimately tied into a commandment that has history all the way back to the Israelites and why God viewed rest as so important. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Well, sure. Of course I can. Um, so back then, the, the Israelites were enslaved in Egypt, and they came under the authority of Pharaoh. And again, Pharaoh probably had the same idea that our, our culture has today, that it's all about the almighty dollar, and it's all about what you can do for me. And so the slaves were working seven days a week and bowing to whatever Pharaoh wanted. They weren't really given a day of rest. They weren't given a day to worship. And when God released them from captivity... Um, he pointed through this commandment that first off, there's a higher authority here that we all answer to, and that's God himself, and that God in his infinite wisdom sees the benefit of us having a day where we don't work, where we take time to worship him, and then to pursue other activities. And so I love how Chris explains that it really was this commandment um, to remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy, Chris explains how it was a declaration of war on an entire lifestyle. Um, and it still is. It's still a declaration of war. It attacked the very fabric of their slave society. On the rest, it was about, on the surface, it was about rest and worship. But on a different, le deeper level, it was about freedom. It was about putting your work in its proper order in the priorities of your life. I also love when Chris points out that, you know, we're human beings. We're not human doings. Yeah. yeah. And it matters more our being than what we do. And, of course, our being is all centered on the God that created us in his image and likeness. 
when I he hear about this and when I, when I read this and read the chapter, I started to think that we have almost made work our idol. Work, and, and it, it's almost, you know, and society has almost forced us to do things like that. And then the pandemic hit, and some of those things changed so drastically, and what we were able to do was put on hold for a little while. How, how do you think, especially in our society, we have transitioned to, to work being more of a priority and activity being more of a priority than that need for rest and that need for worship? So what was your question in there? How has, <laughs> sorry, no, you're good. How has, um, uh, our society transformed in such a way that we have made work in and activity a priority over rest and in in our case as Catholic Christians sometimes God so I think that um, again going back to the almighty dollar that that kind of rules but then too you find that you know tournaments soccer tournaments um, gymnastics whatever are played are often scheduled for a Sunday and where you know if you wanted to be involved in some sport you you might have to sacrifice your Sunday to do that as well especially parents with kids and and so it really is about you know setting priorities being very intentional about keeping the Sabbath day um, and saying no to what the world is demanding or asking of us to, you know, give it up. You mentioned in your reflection that, you know, especially with work, you, you very um, appropriately acknowledge like our health care workers and our first responders who, you know, their jobs can't legitimately say, hey, I have to have every Sunday off. But there is a way in situations where we can honor the need to rest at least one day a week without necessarily declaring Sunday. How, how can people go about doing that? Well, it's just really looking at your schedule. My first career, I was a lab tech in a hospital. So yeah, I worked almost every other weekend, a Sunday. Um, and there's no way I could say I'm not working on a Sunday unless, you know, I put in for time off. But that was just expected because again, the cycle of life never takes a holiday, never takes a Sabbath day. So you, you have to work holidays and, and weekends. And it came down for me and, and my family was to, um, first off, honor those days that we did have off together to, you know, limit what we did, you know, chore wise or whatever, and make sure that we had time as family. Um, and then it's to try to build in, like if you get a day off during the week, try to build in some of that rest time in that day off during the week. It's hard to do it because there's also, you know, laundry to be done and housework. And, and thankfully, thankfully, I have a husband that, you know, picked up that slack for me when I wasn't able to do it. So that made it rather easy. It's just looking at your situation and again, being really intentional about, I need some time. Mm -hmm. I need, I need to focus on something other than work and the normal routine of my household. Yeah, and I think sometimes we get caught up in, like I met friends in, in Richmond a few Saturdays ago, and one of them was like, today is my normal day to get my housework done, to do the laundry, to do this, but I made being with all of you my priority for today, because that was more important. So it was a conscious decision mm -hmm. to do that. and. I think that we as Catholic Christians almost have to set an example for others. You know, have we ever asked our, our supervisors, you know, hey, I, I'm really not comfortable working on Sunday. Is there an option for me mm -hmm. so that you can create that? Uh, we almost um, feel like we don't even have the, the right to ask the question. Whereas maybe if we did, the answer could be yes. So um, looking at it that way. Mm -hmm. um, but what forms have rest taken for you? Well, and it goes all back to the other 
rule that Chris points out, have fun, you know? How can you have fun within your family or by yourself? Um, you know, what activities? And I love how Chris puts this, what activities do you lose a sense of time when you're doing them? Or is there someone that you're with that you lose that sense of time with? And he, um, he gives an example of sitting in an ER, uh, kind of a sad example, but it's still a good example. Sitting in an ER with somebody waiting for, you know, tests to be run and the doctors to come back and you kind of lose that whole sense of time. And that certainly has happened with me on numerous occasions when I, my mother was still alive and we'd be in the ER more frequently than I'd like to admit. Um, and I would call that hospital time. You know, we're on hospital time. A more positive example is when I'm at my sister-in-law's beach house, um, there's beach time where you just are so caught up in mm -hmm. what you're doing, who you're with, yep. that you just totally lose sense of time. And all of a sudden your stomach's growling and you're looking at each other like, oh yeah, it's lunchtime now, you know? Well, we just feel, felt like we just ate breakfast, but oh, that was a few hours ago. Let's, you know. And when we lose that sense of time, we're actually entering into God's time, into eternity, because eternity has no time. There's not going to be clocks in eternity. Thank you, Jesus. Um, <laughs> you know, we're, we're going to be, you know, in, in Kairos time, which is no time. So when we lose that sense of time, when we're doing some activity, that's when we're entering into this true meaning of Sabbath rest, which is resting in God and resting in his time. If you were to think back now that things are starting to open up and, and people's schedules are starting to go back to normal, what what could people possibly do to reflect on their pandemic time to help influence rest now that things are going back? So I think especially for families who do a lot of busy activities with their kids, you know, we have to take them to soccer. We have to take them to um, ball. We have to take them to, you know, dance class, whatever. Um, if you like kind of enjoyed <laughs> not doing all those activities um, and enjoyed your time together as a family more rather than running from one place to another, I would evaluate that. I, I know of a, my girlfriend's sister, her, her young daughter, as the pandemic started and all of a sudden they're, you know, at home and spending more time with each other, kind of basically said to her mom, you know, I don't want to go back to all that stuff that we were yeah. doing. Yeah. Because family time, you know, again, sports have their place, but family time is of the utmost importance. Mm -hmm. And that's what kids remember the most. I remember the Sundays, you know, growing up of family and and my aunt coming over for dinner and um again there was just that different routine and there wasn't this pressure to do a hundred different activities yeah and uh, the reverse of that uh you know i have a lot of great memories from my childhood but one of the memories i do have is when we went on a family vacation and my dad had to leave to go back to work mm. you know and come say goodbye to your dad. He has to go back to work tomorrow. My mom and my older brothers, my sister, you know, all traveled back alone later. Um, so yeah, wa watching that, that dynamic and that priority growing up yeah. influences, oh, yeah, you absolutely. know, uh, a person. Yep. And I think we literally as a society, as a world have a very unique opportunity right now to hit the reset button mm -hmm. and to, to say to ourselves exactly what you just said, what made that time valuable to us when we couldn't do anything? Mm -hmm. Let's try and hold on to at least one or two of those things instead of going back to this, every right. second of the day has right. to be scheduled. Right. And I think from, th there's a reason why rest is also a commandment mm -hmm. because you know, we try and obey all the other ones. Why Why do we devalue rest so much when oftentimes God is in the whisper? Because we feel so guilty when we're not doing something, yeah. you yeah. know? Like, um, okay, so we're filming this on a Sunday, and it's kind of a busy Sunday here. 
um, at the church, but I went home, my husband and I went home in between being at the first mass today and coming back for the first Holy Communion mass this afternoon. And um, I took a nap. Great. Yeah, we both took a nap. Yeah. But you kind of like, as I'm laying there, I'm thinking to myself, isn't there something better you could be doing with your time? And it was like, no. Yeah. I need a nap. Yeah. I need a nap before I come back here. So we just tend to feel like we should be doing, 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 rather than just sitting, being. Again, we're human beings, not human doings. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's, again, giving ourselves permission yeah. to be with God, to, to, be with family to to spend those times like those times you mentioned where you're you you lose track mm -hmm. all of us deserve that because it refreshes us in the long run and makes us more productive for those moments where we have to be at work yep. and and things like that so um i love the fact that this is midway through you know it, it's it's well no it's not two-thirds of the way through um because it gives us a little bit more more time to to think about it and to practice it while we're together mm -hmm. uh, as as a group. But um, if you could leave people with one bit of advice about rest, what would it be? So I think it's um, one more aspect of the Sabbath, looking at it from the Israelites' point of view. And they took their commandments very seriously to the point where it was like the letter of the law. And their zeal for keeping the Sabbath um, became so oppressive to the average modern day, well, average ancient day person, um, that they couldn't adhere to it, you know? And they got picked on a lot for breaking the Sabbath, the Pharisees would pick on their folks, that when Jesus comes along, this is the one thing that gets him into the trouble the most. If you read through scripture that um, he's doing these acts of compassion, which are considered work. So he gets himself yeah. into trouble. And that's really what ended up one of the big influencing factors of his um, arrest and crucifixion was because he he couldn't have been a holy man of God because he was healing the sick and doing acts of compassion on the Sabbath. And he comes out with this, this line that I ponder on sometimes, but he says, you know, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So we have to be really cognizant of what we're doing on the Sabbath, but not to the point where it becomes like legalistic. Yep. You know, um, and so certainly acts of compassion are still still should be done on the Sabbath. It, the Sabbath doesn't give us a day not to not do anything. Did that make sense? Mm -hmm. I said that right. Yep. All right. But it opens the door to the Lord and, mm -hmm. and rest. Um, so you might not technically be resting, but you're really just being very conscious of opening the door to the Lord and what the Lord has in store for you. Thank you. She'll be back next week. I promise. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs>